road, hailing from Georgia in the American South, my next guest has made a name for himself as one of the most popular comedians on the circuit. He's a regular visitor to this country and says that someday he'd like to settle down here. Would you welcome, please, Reginald D. Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. He's leaving, sleeping on that midnight train to Georgia. What's happening, Tuber? What's happening? This is our first time meeting, proper, baby. It's a pleasure. Man, and I have to say, man, you lean as a supermodel, baby. I, uh... <laughs> I'd say I could lean on a supermodel. <laughs> if I could, I would, but I can't. Thanks for that. It's good to see you. Uh, what's the title of your new tour? Uh, the Aluminum Negro. The Aluminum Negro. Yes, sir. Or the Aluminium Negro, depending well, I, on where I, you are. I understand y'all need that over here. We so all aluminium. need that, <laughs> you, you, you use the N-word a lot in your tour titles and all that kind of thing. Is that, is that a risky business for you, or do you care? Is that political correctness? Or tell me about that. The you know N-word. Oh, you don't do that to oh, me oh, now. Oh, ah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. You're, don't, go on. Come on. Well, look, man, I mean, I, may, I, put, I made it Negro this time. So you could at least say that, man. There's, just, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Listen, listen you, you, you tell me what's right and what's wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish it, I wish it was like that in America. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have done that uh, yeah. a fair bit. Um, and uh, I wasn't trying to be provocative when, sure. I, when I did that. I, I was trying to be natural. Yeah. I, was trying to, um, I was trying to make the shows be as much like it is when I'm talking with my friends in my kitchen. And just, you know, we use the language that we use. Yeah. And so I was, and I like to feel natural on stage. So that, that's what makes, puts you in good form when you're doing it and, and yeah, all as well. You know. uh, you're from Georgia, like I say. Yeah. Living in the, United, in the United Kingdom. Yep. But spending a lot, a lot of time here. Yep. So what are we like to you? What are the Irish like to you? Are we well, a strange race of well, human beings? Well, I have beings? to say the Irish people have a real problem saying the N-word. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> um... A um, lot of fun, and I just, uh, and I have to say, I, I feel re it's real easy being around Irish cats. Uh, I, I, and people ask me all the time what Irish people like, and I, I tell them, I say, it's like they're white people, but with none of the entitlement. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was at a club. I was, um, I was in Galway, and um, there's a joke I, I did about an Irish dude that became my manager. Sure. Well, this dude, um, I said, come on, let's go in the club. And I went to the club, and he was still hanging outside. And I went back out, and I said, what's the matter? And he said, Reg, uh, I'm not from here. Yeah, are you sure they'll let me in? And it's like, I said, but you're white. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they let me in, come on. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I mean, and th there's certain uh, divisions here that um, uh, uh, strange to me. Yeah, sure. Like back home, you know, they ask me, they say, well, what's it like over there? What's the racial situation over there like? And I say, well, when you look at how, you know, Irish people feel about North and South and, you know, Protestant and otherwise, you realize, for their racism, they don't really even need black people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they found a way of hating each other. <laughs> for centuries. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, do, do, is the Irish manager, did you actually get an Irish manager, or is that just in part He didn't of become my manager, okay. but he became, like, um, an advisor, and he books gigs for me. In like um, places like uh, Tullamore. Okay. <laughs> so he's very specific in the advice he offers you. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, anything outside the major cities, you know. Just, okay. He's like, like a geographical uh, <laughs> he's, advisor. He's a, he's a master in places like that, man. You know, just. <laughs> Can we talk about George? I, I, I'm not familiar to, with George, never been, but what's it like growing up there? Is it a beautiful part of the world or an awful uh, part of the world? Uh, a lot of it's quite scenic. Um, it gets hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Uh, it, uh, uh, we, we're very hospitable, Good. and um, it's really weird that um, we are some of the most hospitable people in the world. We, we take it very seriously when you are our guest, mm. and it's weird when you, when you go, you'd be like, how can people who are this nice and this hospitable have so much blood in their history? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's um, because, like I say, in the Deep South, it's like um, <laughs> when you... It's easy to... Things like sarcasm can be mistaken for witchcraft. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> um they don't do well with sarcasm. They, um, it's like they, we, we feel one emotion at a time. Okay. We're, and just, you know, and just... It's like... 
over here, people will say things like, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm sad that I'm happy. <laughs> and that's, that's, that, that, that will make the, the, the brain just ooze down the side of our head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you left Georgia, what, in your 20s? Uh, I was 27, 27. 28. 27. Can yeah. I ask you why you left or what, what was this? Why you uh, in that way where you, everybody want to leave their home to see what the rest of the world like. And when I was 17, I used to think, I know that once I leave Georgia, I know and st stupid people do not exist in the rest of the world. It's, uh, they're all here. <laughs> and no, I was wrong about yeah, that. You were um, wrong about that, that's for sure. Stupid people have lots of sex. So. <laughs> <laughs> Populate the world. Yeah. It's the truth. <laughs> but you went back to New to uh, Georgia to make a documentary at the BBC mm. at one point. Uh, what did you learn from that, Reg? What was the... It was a very personal experience sure. in that um, when I left Georgia, I ran from it. I was, I was a bit ashamed of it. I was a bit ashamed of our history. I was a bit ashamed of, I was embarrassed about, about my accent. Um, in the United States, the, the, the southern accent is uh, like having a Brummy accent over here. Right. And, um, and so, but I was forced to go back and do this documentary. It was like, and yeah, I went to places in the south that I never would go. I found myself at a Leonard Skinner concert. And, uh, <laughs> They were just surprised, just as surprised to see me there as I was to see them there. <laughs> and, and there were some situations, that, there's some places that are still a hotbed of racism in the South. Yeah. Um, it wasn't in the documentary, uh, we, left, we left it out, but there was uh, some, the producers decided it would be a good idea if I put on a Confederate general's uniform and went to a, a Civil War reenactment weekend. And I said, um, I don't know if this is a good idea. And, <laughs> and they were like, no, Reg, it'll be fine. <laughs> and so I, I had put the get up on, and I walked out into the, it was like a big stadium full of people. And when I walked out in that Southern general uniform, everything stopped. <laughs> I mean, like babies were crying. They were like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was real tense. Everybody that was watching the action started looking at me. The producer went over to the lady who organized the uh, Civil, Civil War reenactment weekend. They seemed to have some heated words. And he came over to me and he said, we need to fucking go. And, <laughs> and we jumped in our vans and we hauled ass. <laughs> that was a risky business, in fairness. It has to be said. Um, can I ask you about your name, Reginald, uh, and why your mother chose that name rather than any other? Is there a reason for it or was it just well, um, on the rage at the time? In the mid-60s, uh, there was uh, the voting, right, voting Rights Act that was meant to help black people be allowed to vote. And then there came affirmative action that was trying to help black people get more. So it just seemed like there were more opportunities. Sure. And I was born in 69. And so my mother, you know, she was like, if I give you a name, a white sounding name like Reginald, he'll at least be able to get past the phone interview part. And so uh, <laughs> there's lots of... Um, of my generation, there's lots of black men named Reginald and Winstons and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, I've been told that those were assimilationist names. Assimilationist <laughs> names, to get you past the phone part of the interview. Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, just... If and you then can... when you show up for the face-to-face -face interview? Yep, it's, well, you know what, just... <laughs> does, Reg does, Reginald, does Reginald get the job? Well, I mean, that, that's a toss-up, man. It's, it's like in American sports. Yeah. They say, just get to the playoffs. Anything can happen. Yeah. Just get to, the, get to the tournament round and just, you'll see. And... Yeah, I mean, I can't say it's left me in bad stead. And so, um, and my middle name, um, Darnell, um, my mother named me that. Um, she was going to name me Purnell after this actor named Purnell Roberts, okay. who used to be uh, in this TV series called Bonanza. Yeah. Um, I don't know how she slipped that past my daddy because she fancied this white man. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, that's how I got to be named Reginald. And my surname, Hunter, uh, actually ought to be Shepherd. My father was um, born Homer Shepherd, and at 15 he moved in with his aunt, who was living with a man who owned property, and he hadn't, he hadn't had children. And he said, you're going to live here, you're going to take my name. And his name was Will Hunter. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> that's where it all I, yeah. planned out. The, the, you're talking a lot about race in our conversation tonight, and I suppose we think about the presidential election happening across the way and you're looking at Donald Trump head, heading towards the nomination and very possibly, like you just said a minute ago, who knows, uh, the White House. Uh, how, how are you feeling about that? Well, I've already decided that if he wins, I will become a resident of Ireland. And, uh, <laughs>
<laughs> well, you'd be welcome here. I do. Do you feel that strongly about it, Jeff? I feel that Donald Trump is a, is a fear monger. All of his politics is based in fear. And if you remember, um, uh, earlier this year, uh, uh, late last year, he was saying a lot about Mexicans and yes. immigrants. And he yes. was like, Mexicans, we need to shut the border. We need to keep Mexicans out. A lot of the rapists, a lot of the crime over here is done by Mexicans. And then El Chapo, that Mexican cartel leader who escaped, he threatened Donald Trump. He said, shut your mouth about Mexicans or I'll shut it for you. And then all of a sudden, Trump started going, Muslims. Muslims are the problem. <laughs> Muslims. We need to get rid of Muslims. And he moved it on. <laughs> but do you, do you fear the, the, the possibility of President Trump? Only slightly more than I fear the possibility of President Clinton. I think, I, I think and uh, it's nothing against women, relax. <laughs> um, but I, it's like Cat Williams said, I, it's like after a breakup when you like to take a time out. I think we could do in America with not having a president for about four or five years. <laughs> and just, see, how that, just, see how that works just out. See, yeah, just see how that works out. Kind of like you right now, kind of between governments. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, <laughs> keep it like that for yeah. a while, you know? We'll see how it all works out. It's been good to have you on the show. Man, I Thanks sure appreciate it, man. Reginald D. Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Thank you. Stay there for